Hello again, everyone. Melth here. More about Baldur's Gate 3 Challenge Run. Full description of it in the YouTube video description. To summarize it though, I avoid doing long rests, don't heal my party with healing potions, and try to tackle all encounters with combat and with the hardest configuration of enemies possible. Watch out for spoilers throughout this run. So where we left off, I was here in the Hag's Swamp, about to loot these red caps. Let me clear out these barbed bull rushes first so I don't blunder into them and take any damage. This area isn't really hard to navigate safely, it's just kind of tedious, because you have to clear out these little traps, and you have to watch out for the little traps in the water and things like that. So I don't like it much. So for that reason, I'll be going to a waypoint up ahead so I can just teleport here in the future and skip all that nonsense. The red caps don't really have much on them. But might as well loot them and pick up the thrown things. I'll be careful to group people up only after I know that they're on a safe path and won't just be walking into a trap as they try to group up with me. Because again, we've got to just watch out for that in this environment. Now coming up ahead will be a tricky little... I should avoid that one more carefully. Tricky little puzzle fight. There, that's who I meant to click on. Protection from Evil Scroll. That reminds me, I was going to cast Protection from Evil on my party. Since I have so many scrolls of it and I'm not currently concentrating on things. Wait, he stopped concentrating immediately? Huh. Okay, well I think now we can safely group everyone up. In any case, I have three party members who can cast Protection from Evil. So, it basically gives... A wide variety of enemy creature types disadvantage on attacks against you. And also you can't be charmed by them, or things like that. It's not amazing, it's very situational, but because it lasts all day in this game, you might as well have it up if you have that many scrolls of it, and you don't have anything better to cast. So I have three party members who can cast it legitimately, basically. So that's why I'm allowed to have them use scrolls for it. And the third one, I guess, would be... Carlac can cast it. Although maybe we'll actually have her cast it on Lazel. Maybe we'll have yeah, I'll have Carlac cast it on Lazel. Well, well, well. It might help Lazel in the upcoming little puzzle fight here. Speaking of which, I want to equip her with the Everburn Blade for this one, I think. And now everyone's concentrating on a spell except for Leboing Zell, so I want to have her have this Guidance Necklace. She already has Guidance, but I want to take it away from my main character so I don't accidentally break Concentration to cast Guidance. Because again, only one Concentration spell at a time, Guidance is Concentration. Don't cancel your big buff to cast Guidance. Not that that's a big buff per se, but don't want to cancel it accidentally. So there's the waypoint in the Hag's Horrifying Lair. We'll be coming back at a more appropriate time. For now, we're just here to deal with this little frog creature that the hag's magic has tainted. Here it is, lagging again. I am at my wit's end. I've set the graphics down to just, like, the minimal settings. I've turned off every application in the background. This all happened because of patch 5. I never liked this before that patch, but I can't find anything online to help with this problem. Okay. Well, here we are. So that little frog is befuddled by the hag's magic, and actually a surprisingly dangerous foe in a puzzle fight kind of way. It can be very easy or very hard, but you need to handle it properly to make it easy. I don't know what the frog is talking about here. I've heard people trying to puzzle it out on like forums and so forth, but no one's found a good answer that I'm aware of. It might just be that it sees the illusion of green leaves rather than the filthy swamp that we're actually in. Or people have said there's some kind of you know, reaction that can happen if you bring it the right items, but no one's found any kind of conclusive answer that I'm aware of. Anyway, it doesn't really matter much. If you kill the hag, then the frog is freed, but for my run, I'm going to do everything by combat, basically, so I'm going to fight it here. Despite its tiny size, it is shockingly dangerous. I mean, first of all, it's very good initiative just due to having ludicrous high dexterity. Look at that armor class also. Part of that's from the mirror image, but even without that, it has just stupendously high armor. So, hard to hit unless you have a way to auto-hit. And hard to get rid of these mirror images because you don't dispel one unless you do a bunch of attacks against it. And it has this, so if you do a projectile attack against it, you get hit instead of it. 
one time enemy. It also applies to Magic Missile, which is the obvious solution to that has low hit points but high armor class. And then it has this to make it hard to hit with air of effect blasts of some kinds. And then it has this. So if you attack it in melee, you might go crazy and then become confused. So it's a pretty rough fight, especially given that I can fire projectiles that do like, I don't know, 20 damage or so. But I came up with a pretty smart solution, I think. First of all, let's see if Le Bungzel can, for free, hit it with Halo of Spores. It's pretty weak constitution, so the chance of success is decent. There we go. Okay. That makes things easier. So in that case, now it has less than 24 HP. Therefore, it will auto-fall asleep if I cast Sleep on it from this scroll. Or I have it as a spell, but I'll cast it from the scroll. If it had you know, resisted that attack, what it would have done with it was throw an Alchemist Fire near it, but not at it. That does at least one damage to it, guaranteed, and then that lures it into the sleep threshold, and it can't reflect that thing. Okay. Let me make sure that I have non-lethal turned off, because I'm going to kill it in one shot. I think this one chance to resist going mad, I think. So let's chop it. That should guaranteed kill it. Well, almost guaranteed. The damage would be like 6d6 plus 2d4 plus 5, so it's more than enough to do 20 damage, even with bad rolls. Okay. Now over here, there's a little treasure the frog would have led you to as a reward if he cleared out the hag. We might or might not end up successfully spotting it. You're concentrating on that. So maybe you should be the one who casts Guidance on Ballista to improve my chances of success on the difficult perception check to spot the treasure. If I miss it, I miss it. I'll take those minor treasures. And then we'll come creeping along over here toward where the frog's treasure is hidden. I seem to recall this stretch of water is safe. Even if it's not, I have a good chance to spot it. Well, I have main character man up ahead with his proficiency in perception, his decent wisdom, guidance, and my disguised self ring bonus. Nonetheless, I failed. Okay. Well, the others might succeed, but it's a tough check. What's the DC? Definitely class 20. Yep. That's not easy. So cast guidance on yourself now. Actually, you already failed it. Okay. Cast guidance on the core. Like with decent wisdom, so we've got some chance of success there. There we go. If you miss it, you just can't get it, as far as I'm aware. Scroll of False Life. That could be good to give some free temporary hit points to Karlak. So, you know, I'll take it. Everyone else is a good way to get temporary hit points. Not her, though, basically. Yeah, some good little scrolls. Very nice. Okay, False Life. So now, plus seven temporary hit points. Nice to have. Alright, I think we are good to walk over toward land here, but I'll take it slow. That looks like a booby trap over there. Reinforced Greatsword. So maybe I will walk very carefully toward that. Oh, I should mean dash, but dash in slow, steady increments. Aha! Uh -huh. Can I just pull them for me to save me some movement? Yes. Anything special about these? I don't know if I remember looting them before. And the concentration saving throw is nice. I guess I might as well give that to the boy and Zell now. Well, it seems like it's pretty standard, unless I'm overlooking something. I'll check that later on, perhaps. We can exit turn base mode, get everyone back onto dry land, and group them all up again. So, we need to get back to the opposite side of the swamp. I think the best way to do that will be to walk along the land here, where we know it's safe. The booby traps are in the water, where they're hard to spot. Then if we walk over to this little boardwalk area, that's also safe, and will lead us most of the way to our destination. Almost clicked on that barbed bull rush by mistake. Let me check my camera is still angled right. I just shifted my chair. I don't have the green screen be set up wrong here. Okay, looks like we're good. 
So over here we find a place where people were murdered by red caps. Red caps just kill people for the sake of it, pretty much, but also if they die, their hat's red and blood that keeps them alive in D&D. &D. Like the Putting the fun in funeral. Water bottles. Glad to have those. Good for putting out fires, getting people wet. Lots of things, really. I'm trying to add these things to wares. A loot, I guess I could sell. It is loot. Some pretty bad scrolls there. Witch Bolt is one of the worst spells in the game. Always has been. Like, it was pretty much useless for almost any character whatsoever in 5e. People get hyped about it auto-hitting after the first hit, but like if you do the math, it's absolutely not worth it. Water bottles are nice. Yeah. Good helping of random gear and whatnot. Glad to have that money. I have certainly felt poor with the higher prices and honor difficulty. So... Here's a big stone, and there's a giant tree. That must be the tree that the note to Kaga was talking about. So let's walk our way back over there to where we can hopefully jump across. I don't think I'll bring Shovel into this fight. I don't think she'd be very useful for it. Action. I'll get everyone else Long Jumper so they can jump across. Which again, besides being ritual, is not concentration. It's wonderful. Just free mobility. What more could you want? Everyone's in stealth mode. Okay. So let's jump across there. There'll be some enemies waiting. And then let's go into turn-based mode once everyone's across. And jump up over here to get claim the high ground. High ground again gives you plus two to hit, gives enemies minus two to hit, and you can occasionally use it to take cover so they can't hit you at all, you know, depending on their exact positioning. There are some barbed bulrushes to watch out for here. Curious. I also could just climb up the uh, roots, but I'd rather do this so I don't need to get close to them and don't need to waste as much movement. So let's survey what we've got here for a moment. These ancient mud methods are dangerous in that they explode on death and they summon minions. So we want to take them out as fast as we can, really. There's quite a few of them. They also have ranged attacks. Then we've got these wood woads here, kind of the tanks for the group. They have high armor class, high hit points, weak to fire, also regenerate. And they can entangle you when they get close. So we want to keep them off of us for as long as we can. So... I'd love to, thanks. What is our approach here going to be? Currently we've got these three clustered up where they might be all possible to take out at the same time. That would be good, and then we can maybe fairy fire the wood woods to make them easier to hit. This guy over here might go unkilled for a little bit, but that won't be too bad. Will that initiate a fight? It does. Okay, he wins initiative, of course. Let me get the others into a good position, then have them join in too. Don't want to be abusing stealth, just want to be getting people into reasonable positions. Let's see when their birds go. Oh, I did not mean to unsell that one there. Uh, okay, let's fly you up here to a better position. Now exit stealth. Okay, there we go. Everyone's in combat without getting any value out of stealth. So, there we go. So I want to kill these guys that have enough HP that it's not easy to instant kill them. This has a good chance to instant kill one of them. Let's see if I can get close enough that I don't have that penalty. Hmm. Well, this is a pretty good chance to hit. We'll go for it. Wow, terrible damage there. Okay, in that case, I want to see if I can take this one out. Now, if I shoot with maybe an acid arrow to do a bit of extra damage, that should make it more likely to get an actual kill. So let's try that. God-awful luck, Astarian. Okay. 
Nothing important is ever easy. Oh, she shows the Everburn Blade Equip. That's a mistake. I mean, it shouldn't matter as long as I don't let anyone attack, but I do want to have people have shields. Alright, how about you throw at that guy? He's a bit further away. Got the extra height damage there, somehow or other, by magic. So minimum damage of four. If I turn off Sharpshooter here, it should be guaranteed to... Almost guaranteed to hit. We'll go for it. There we go. That gives him his extra action, which is what I really wanted there. Now, I don't think it's going to be possible to hit that guy. Even if I throw, I don't think it's going to be possible. Yeah, no. So, I'm going to be limited to going after this Wood Woad there. I can probably have other weaker guys take out these two little severely injured things. So let's maybe shoot a fire arrow after I pass one of those to him. I could also consider using Oil of Accuracy to overcome the super high armor class those things have. It'll probably be okay. So if I shot with a fire arrow, 55% is not good. So maybe I should actually break out a fairy fire for this fight. I'm not sure. It's not that hard to fight. I might try to go without. I do want to free Karlak up, and I need to kill that thing so it doesn't get a turn to do anything nasty to me. Can you just take it out with Halo of Spores in any way? Not without going down there, which we don't really want. Halo of Spores is a pretty short range. And that takes that one down. Okay. That's a fine turn for you. I guess we can dig this thing up. No, we can't. Okay. So, Ballista, you've got your turn left. You could probably not kill if you did that. I could also apply Hex to do more damage to the Woodwodes next turn. I could leave that one to Karlak, who can probably take it out. Maybe I'll do that. So this is kind of the first fight where they have enough hit points. I think I've been have multiple rounds of attacking them, so I might as well use Hex on them. And I think I do want to repel it. Yeah. Alright, well, we'll try it. Even if we fail to hit it, we'll at least set the ground on fire, I think, which will hurt it. There we go. Not too bad. They resist Pierce, which is another reason they're a little bit rough to deal with. Hide you so you can ambush them later on, maybe. He'll probably summon himself a clone. Yeah, there he goes. Oh, it gets a good initiative, too. That's not great for me. Okay, I want to take that thing out with a thrown weapon, probably, to make it almost certain to kill. Because this is not likely to work. So let's make sure you've got something to throw. I think all the uh, throwables have kind of migrated to Ballista, which is a pretty natural tendency. Given that he's picking most things up. Okay, that takes that one down. Now... You can throw mud at me, which would be a nuisance. I'll probably be okay given that I've got high ground. He can fly, but he can't fly that well. I want them to not get killed because they die in one hit to most things. So I can get cast aid on them to give them more hit points. Okay, he's dashing. So that means he's coming over to me, which means if he explodes, he'll do damage to me. I don't want that. So I probably better find a way to get him out of there. But I have a plan. Alright, so he's on fire. That's good for me. So, I want to get you another turn to do good things with. Here's a thought. Can you grab that thing and throw it? The chance of success should be pretty good, I think. Yeah, it's bad dexterity. She's got good athletics, so she should have a very good chance to just grab it and throw it. Maybe down at that guy, it'll explode on death, hopefully against him. Well, didn't die, but still pretty good. Perhaps you can shoot another fire arrow, and that might well explode it. Now it's saved. Okay. Well, I'll turn off that passive then. And shoot that guy down. Good. That made him explode. That's great. 
pretty well thought out maneuver there to make the enemies take the damage instead of me, I think. You only got one extra shot, so you better make it count. You will probably not kill that guy if you just shoot him. You take... This guy takes half damage, which is not great from piercing. So you would probably, if you've shot him, do not enough to kill without some setup. You are invisible, which helps. He's wet, so I'll take half damage from fire, so that's not a deal for me. Can I... I have to go down low for that one. I don't want that. Can I just shoot you from up here? Maybe? If I position a bit better? No. Not with that maybe moving Astarian. Astarian has a bit of movement to spare, so maybe I'll have him get out of the way. Have Le Boingzell try and go over here. Can't hit that guy close, though. But if she can soften up that one, that's still pretty good. It's a miss. Eh. It was worth a try. No choice but to keep going. Well, I do have Hex against you, so if I shoot you, I'll probably kill you. I'll take it. And then I can apply Hex again to... I have to go down lower to get that one. I don't want to do that. So maybe I won't do that. Maybe I will save Hex for when that Woodwood comes closer, and I'll just shoot this one for now. Take you first. Ah! Lucky little thing. So you're out of options. So, Astarian. I think we can't kill it this turn unless we get some good luck. I'm not sure if it's worth spending another arrow. I'll probably try it to set that thing on fire and hopefully uh, help take down the Woodwode. Alright, we missed it, but at least we set that guy on fire. It'll probably summon another henchman. I don't love that, but it'll be okay. Or might throw just mud at us, which is also not great, but yeah, here it comes. But I think it had disadvantage in that, I believe, due to protection from evil. Am I right about that? Good armor class, had high ground, so he has a hard time hitting. So it was pretty unlikely that he would hit. Fuck yes. Well, let's see what we can do here. That guy's on fire, so that's great. If I throw a hand axe, I think that bypasses some of their damage resistance, because they resist... Piercing and bludgeoning, but not slashing. So if I give her a hand axe, that does slashing damage, I believe. Ah, but it won't let me do it from there. Well, what if I run over here and then try it? Will that be any better? Same path is interrupted. By what? By the tree? Hmm. And I can't move past there? That's annoying. Okay. Well, maybe I'll just throw at this guy instead. Rather hurt the Woodwode, but, you know, we'll take what we can get. Incoming. I want those to attack only Woodwodes and not, you know, anything that would explode on death and kill them. Speaking of Woodwodes, I've got some theories about these. So. Woodwoods can be the former lovers of dryads. I found that out in this game. So, one theory I have about this is the hag said that she had treated the person who had been boiled by his wife after he had been caught having an affair with a dryad. And she picks him up depending on the light so he looks good as new. Well, the hag doesn't really help people. She only hurts people. So it might be that maybe she turns someone into a woodwood by cutting out their heart, which is how that happens, among other things. That's possible. Or it could be that because evil druids often do that, that these were created by the shadow druids when they came here. Evidence against that might be these are called ancient mud methods, not like recently summoned mud methods. So there might just be elemental things that were already here and there might be no story to them. But just ideas, at least. Alright, well the woodwill is closer than I want, so we better find a way to take it out. I could have a chance to chop it for decent damage there. No good. Let's see if we can hex that guy, and then push him away, back into fire, ideally. Oh, I was going to put on my spellbook, as one of you has suggested, Propelling Blast, so I can toggle that on or off more efficiently. Okay, knocked him back. Didn't set him on fire, but knocked him back is still something. I 
how much would that cost? It would cost about half movement. That's not too bad. Let's try it. Yeah. Not ideal. Oh, it got wet, so it's no longer on fire. That's also not ideal. Shouldn't have pushed it after all. Remember in that Hobgoblin fight, I couldn't get any enemies to be wet? And now suddenly, I can't get them not to be wet? That should kill, giving me an extra action. There we go. And advantage, which is also good. Gives me another chance to blind that guy. I should probably go for that and just try to take him out this round, because I've got lots of people ready to attack. There we go. I don't love that. Nine damage. I also don't love that. You can fly out of there to what we may hope is safety. You can fly not as far. Is there any way to get you up a cliff or anything like that? Or up that tree? No. Sadly, you can't just have birds just fly, you know, into the air. That's not an option. Okay. So you could perhaps throw fire at him or throw a hand axe at him. Should be pretty good at throwing a hand axe. Let's go with that if I can find one of them. Jeez, I'm not running out of throwables. Survival is all that matters. <laughs> huh. Well, that's not great. Okay, I can throw a thing that'll take half damage, or it could go down there and attack with 84% chance to hit. I might go for that. There we go. Let's... Oop, didn't mean to do that. I meant to untoggle group mode, so people don't blunder into anything they shouldn't. We want to clear out these barbed bulrushes, then we want to loot this dirt mound. Oh, the fire is destroying objects. Okay. That's fine. What's in the dirt here? Ready to rest, huh? Not happening. Some die, okay. A salami, the game's most meme-heavy uh, weapon. Water bottles are useful. Can't slow down. Can you not get down? Oh, you're blocked. Alright, now get down there. So, let's loot these things. This one has a unique shield that gives you Woads and Snaring Strike as a bonus action, once per short rest. It's okay, because it's you know, we don't have many better shields right now. I don't really know what a Woad is in this context. Woad is, I think, a plant that's used to make blue dye in New York. There is a myth that it was commonly used by you know, some Celts in Scotland or Northern England back in ancient times, but I'm aware of no actual good evidence for that whatsoever. Julius Caesar's commentaries on the Gallic Wars are often cited, but I've read that like three times and he does not say they used blood for that, so I don't think that's what they're talking about. I also thought for a bit it might be maybe... Um, There are these things called wood woeses in medieval tapestries and things like that. They're sort of representations of the wild, so they were depicted as tree people. But then I realized that those are woeses, not woads. So that can't be it either. So maybe it was just made up for D&D. I'm not sure. Speaking of uh, wood woads, though, and I mentioned their origin could be that an evil druid that cuts out a person's heart and plants a seed there and whatnot. Another step of the ritual is putting them into like, a tree crevice. So that might indeed have been something that the shadow druids did here. But I'm just kind of speculating. These are decent items for a monk or someone who uses unarmed strikes. You can get a lot of lightning charges and kind of just get paid to be fighting, which you want to be doing already. So, yeah, not too bad. Alright, letter to Kaga. So, Falder was the evil leader of the Shadow Druids from, I think, Baldur's Gate 1. I mean, Kaga is already the acting first druid, so they're really not offering her much of anything here. But she's not too bright, so, you know... Not too surprising. 
In any case, we're done here in the swamp. We can go out and deal with Kaga now. Let's loot a few things on our way back and then just warp home so we can skip the tedious trudge. Anything of use? Nothing of use there. Zell, can you cast Enhanced Leap on me? No? Okay, fine. Just cast it on yourself and you jump across, and then we'll see if you can loot anything that's over there in that boat. I feel like I remember there was some kind of item over there. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. Wooden trunk, nothing in that. Yeah, some wine. Take it and sell it, I guess. Okay. Maybe there's a hidden treasure I'm forgetting, maybe something else. I'll check that and then we'll get out of here. I just felt like there was an item in that general area. Ah, okay, survival fell. So there probably is indeed a treasure of some sort over here. That must have been what I was thinking about when I thought there was something near this boat. Once again, I dig in the wrong direction. Oh, nice. Some valuables. All right, let's get everyone home or close to home to the Emerald Grove. I do wish there's a waypoint actually in the Emerald Grove. There probably isn't because it can get sealed off with the Rite of Thorns if you play your cards exactly wrong. But, oh, did he not get teleported? She not get teleported? Okay, let's fix that. I've got a long road ahead. No, people were in cell phone. Let's get them all out so they can walk full speed. I do also wish the door opened a little bit faster. It just kind of seems like a long wait every time it happens. I suppose it's not actually that long in real terms, but it feels long. Get aboard the elevator. Okay, there we go. Ah, oh, the birds got left behind. Let's hope they can figure this out. You think a bird could fly down that, but you might be wrong. Dagger root, and it's free to take. I guess I might as well grab it. Will the familiars catch up if I just walk through into this doorway here? If not, I'll have to fly them in manually. Okay, time for a fight against Kaga. Well, almost. Let's talk to one of these rats first, I think. Seems like a good moment to talk. The rat has hardly left. We can now accuse it of being a shadow druid. A distant thought claws at your mind and slips into view. Kaga's rats might not be simple familiars, but shape-shifted shadow druids. You really would think if anyone would recognize a fellow druid and not a common animal, it would be these all other druids in here, but I guess they're just not that good at their jobs. Anyway, now we know about this, it gives us good excuse to have good in-character preparation for this fight. Now, a couple things that I need to do here. One of them is, I need to get Mark Roll to come into this room. He's that evil elf druid who, he will become hostile here if we allow him to be in the room, and I want that so I can have the hardest possible fight. So I want to wait for him to be in here. Oh, is he already in here? Okay. That part's good. Let's see if I can spread out before he uh, leaves in that case. Let's get these guys maybe around that corner. And I don't know, maybe stealth over there. Probably the wolf will meet the spot and spoil that. Maybe not. Okay, and then we want everyone else to spread a bit. Well, I'm at it. Find location. Don't be shy. And also spread out. She has a powerful AoE blast, and we probably know she has that because it's a typical druid thing to have in this game. You're in an okay spot. Still alive. 
Let's have you apply your oil of accuracy. No one stopped me yet. And then... Yeah, what coatings do I have? Come to think of it. Do I have anything interesting? Just poisons, basically. I think she's immune to sleep, being an elf, so... Won't bother with that. Alright, let's go. Why are you here? I sent you to Zevlor. Well, number one, I don't take orders from you, but number two, Shadow Druid. They really are just like the filthiest looking hobbits. Even besides just having kind of some ugly brown colored tattoos, it looks like they're just smeared in dirt and mud all over. Maybe it's from being rats all the time? Or maybe uh, the uncleanliness is next to ungodliness or whatever, and they being shadow druids, it's against their religion to be clean. That damn nose of yours has gone poking yeah, you. maybe the goblins have taken my nose like they kept talking about. I can explain. Shh, shh. No need. I think Alden is still being patient with her here just to manipulate her, because Cocker is still chained side to this point. We'll be avoiding that though. We want to do things in the hardest possible way, so we're going to do the dialogue option that makes all the druids side against us, basically. Well, all except Wrath, of course, because he's reasonable. Cloakwork? Cora, have you lost your mind? Halsin is weak, Wrath. But in the shadows, we are strong. We are safe. There is no other way. You and Halsin welcome untouchables to your midst. You defile the grove. For the sake of harmony, Oladin speaks truth. Who among you disagrees? Which one of you guys read your tenets last? How they talk about how you need to take in people who need it. So Wrath, you know, stops being a doormat and stands up to her here. I like Wrath. Start with a snitch, as you say, Oladin. Anyway, we could persuade her to join us here, but we'll take this option so that she sides against us. Yeah, you know, this reminds me of that famous quote where, uh, at the middle of the Great War between Greece and Persia, the Battle of Thermopylae, a Spartan commander, when told to lay down his arms, said, "Come and take them." Molan Lave. And this quote, I think, gets a lot of hype. It doesn't really deserve because the Persians did come and take them successfully, and you know the complete defeat of Sparta at that battle nearly cost Greece their entire military strategy because the Spartans completely bungled it. But Never mind that. Same thing will happen to Kaga here. Let's spike growth her. And ideally not Ballista, but I do want to give a spot where I can Thunder Wave them is the thing. Uh, that might be worth it. So maybe I will spike growth in here to try to control all of them. Like just barely not where Ballista is. Spike Growth is a wonderful control spell, as I think I've mentioned. So, in that case, you should be able to Thunder Wave them for a bunch of damage. I think you actually have a scroll of it, probably, so I might as well use that. Yeah, two, in fact. So, get some extra damage. Spike them. Kaga is the biggest threat here, because she's a pretty powerful caster. I want to avoid her casting a super strong moonbeam on my guys or anything like that. So. If I can get a kill with you here, that would give you an extra action. Which would be pretty good. So maybe if I can use my bonus action to set that up, I can then devastate Kaga. Yeah. Okay, I probably will not be killing her this time. So, let me think. If I do a Roaring Thunder, can I hit multiple targets here? I can hit two targets for more spike damage. I like that. It'll knock her out toward the edge of the spikes, but still decent. Okay, but now I need to finish off one of them. This would probably kill you. It would almost certainly kill you, Loic, over there. Okay, you're invisible, so you have a very high chance to hit. I've got an idea now. If I shoot an arrow of darkness 
that might blind her basically as well as damaging her and make it so that they can't fight properly and we'll have to waste their time walking out of the darkness at half speed. So maybe I will try that. I haven't tried that in this fight before, but it seems like a good opportunity here to prevent her from doing a moonbeam at all, maybe. Where are my arrows of darkness? I know I've got some. Never a dull moment. I know I bought a decent amount over time from Smiths and found a few. Oh, let me just search for it. There we go. Why is that not... Did I put it in the wrong inventory? Oh, I know. If your turn is ended, you can't pass things. Sometimes. It's not consistent as far as I can tell. Alright, we shall see if that works. Hopefully. Why are you still invisible? That's interesting. Huh. They can't be shot because they're in the darkness. You know, trade-offs, downsides. It's okay. And maybe I will poke Mark Rowe for some damage and then try to get behind cover so that no one can hit me and break my concentration on Spike Rowe, which is an important part of my strategy here. Yeah, yeah, can't get me. Alright, she can probably shoot someone. Oh, she's wild chafing instead. Okay, that's fine. Oh no, not silver! Alright, I don't know how well Cog is actually controlled. You know, we'll see. Ah, I can't throw him into the spikes as I was hoping. Might be able to get him off of me, at least. I only did one damage. Okay, I was hoping for a bit better. Can I shove him into the spikes? If I get the angle right, maybe. No, that barely pushes him for some reason. Well, I guess we'll take it. And then run away. And keep spread out so she can't moonbeam if she does get the chance to get out of the spikes. Okay, good. She's not moonbeaming. She's wasting her turn dire wolfing. We don't care about that at all. By all means, waste your time on that move. You're not in combat yet. But you probably would immediately become if you unstealth. Okay. So. You don't get to go now. Oh well. You can go and blind this badger. Or you can't. Let's try that again, shall we? There we go. That should set up Silver to get the kill pretty easily, I would think. And you stay safe, I think, where no one can shoot you. Good boy, Silver. No, you idiot! You just undid the spikes in that area! Ah! Didn't even entangle any of them. We don't want to blind someone whose turn is about to come up, which is pretty much all of them, I guess. So we'll just fly in here and beak attack you. Or not. But you've got a bow, so you can't do anything to us, so out we go. That was a complete waste of a second level spell, man. Alright, so these druids have been pretty much less than worthless as allies. So, um, you know, ideal for challenge, I guess. The darkness did stop her from doing any kind of dangerous attack to me. So that worked pretty well. Maybe I should just focus on taking out these other druids and whatnot now. You know, I do also have Shovel lying in wait here, ready to attack anybody who becomes vulnerable.
Let's have you come out here. And Halo of Spores. Him, he's pretty bad constitution, so a decent chance to work. Can we, if we move here, can we then throw you... Nah, not great chances, but we'll try it. Not bad, to do a bit of damage to both. Get you out of bear form there. Still almost full health, that's not ideal for us. Let's go. So, I think we want to get Astarian a kill on one of these, and then hopefully he can go for Oladon next. So if he shoots, he will almost certainly kill. So we'll go for that. Alright, he gets invisibility again. So we can shoot her from invisibility now. Probably won't kill, but we'll do good damage. Okay. So then if Ballista can get the kill, ideally with an offhand shot, I'll try it. No? Okay. In that case, we'll try it like so. It takes her down. So Kaga should be just kind of stuck in animal shape, unable to do very much for now, I think. Then if I can shoot you for good damage, or you and force you to waste your turn... Eh. I'll just go for you. Damage that's for keeps on a person who's not in animal shape. Am I going to try this again? You bet I am. It's fun to throw these people because they're just tiny sized hobbits, so it's very easy. Get back in there and deal with those spikes again. that do? Probably powers him up in some way. Inciting how... Oh. By all means, use your extra movement speed to poke yourselves to death on the spikes. Uh, speaking of spikes, is Silver gonna charge in there and die? I hope not. Okay, good. He's being smart this time. Sometimes, even after I've won the fight, one time it happened that he charged into the spikes and died after the fight was over, thereby provoking all the druids. Terrible. There we go. And I think being blinded will persist even to when she gets restored to her elf form, so I can just tear her apart this round. Alright, now don't spoil anything else, Findal. I think we're getting to the point where I need to turn the spikes off, because once Wrath's Wild Shape ends, he's going to just die over there. Breath, what's your intelligence? You should know better than this. Alright, once again, I want to try to secure a kill if I can, but no one is particularly softened up for it yet. Would Kaga be if I could take her out of her current form? Probably. It's so nice having that reaction attack. It doesn't take an action, it doesn't take a bonus, it just takes your reaction. And usually I don't have anything to do with my reaction right now anyway, so it's just so efficient for action economy to have that option as a spore druid. Alright, back to human form you go. You should now be able to, if you turn on... It is on. That number doesn't add up then. Uh, let's try that again. Okay, it is... something is screwy here. There we go. That'll almost threaten the kill. Let's go for it. Nice. Okay. So then that leaves Pinta and Ren. It would be useless overkill to use those shots on someone who's still currently in uh, animal form. Let's try to knock him out of animal form first. Yeah, failed. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you've got your turn. 
Can you knock him out of his current form? And also blind him at the same time. Oh, he's already, he's already blinded. But yes, perfect. Okay. Very good. So in that case, it should be pretty easy to kill off Ren. And I think now I had better end those spikes before my allies start spiking themselves to death. They weren't as good as they usually were because the druids spoiled them with their own entangles this time, but it was still a pretty darn good effect overall, I would say. Okay, how about you throw another object to maybe break him out of that animal form? Paths and Oh, they're still in the darkness over there? Huh. The darkness, I think, was overall worth it to save me from a really devastating moonbeam. There we go. I knew it'd have an angle I could attack from. Alright, can you now finish it? Probably. Uh, did it hit, or... Didn't actually say whether that hit or missed. There we go. Alright, pretty good, I would say. Was that no damage taken? Yeah, for my team it was. Not bad. I'd say that's a very fun tactical fight. I think I made some good uses of special resources there to make it work. Let's get our reward from Wrath, which is mostly him just bemoaning that it came to this. Which, fair enough, he just had to kill a bunch of his colleagues. I mean, Markerill, of course, I'm sure he was also thinking how to come in this whole time. Yes, for her to die like this, under the Tree Father's gaze, perhaps it is justice. It's definitely justice that Markerill is dead. Even if you persuade Kaga to come back to the non-evil druid side, Marco will still talk about how it would have been better to side with the Shadow Druids. He's the worst. Well, that was a pretty fun session, I thought. Hope you all enjoyed it, too. A lot of fun tactical battles, though. The kind of thing this run is supposed to be all about. Thank you for watching, everyone. And a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Master Knight DH, Jackie, and Lino, George Grin, Travis, Carlo Andrea 97, Gregory, Danny Hall, William Wakefield, Jeffrey Morse, Dylan Wagner, Just Beckett, Austin Livingston, Jack, Mashas01, CL, Jacob Marshall, Nubiana, Till Fisher, Latinx, and Discord Colossus. Have a great day, everyone.